Hey guys and gals, Homestead Prepper. Today's video is titled, My Wife's Car Was Taken Out by an EMP. And guys, uh, two things, that is not clickbait, um, that is not my wife's car, that is just there for, uh, you know, for visual. <laughs> uh, but her car was taken out by a lightning-induced EMP. And she happened to be about 750 miles away from me when it happened, and she was visiting some family up in North Carolina in a remote area. Uh, anyway, I was heading up there that morning. She called me, and I, you know, looked at the car, and uh, I couldn't get it going. It would turn over. I plugged my scan tool in there. It said no uh, information received from the ECU. So I, you know, it's kind of, you know, out in the middle of nowhere. I decided, well, we'll just take it to a local mechanic, and he looked at it and confirmed it was the ECU. And he said he didn't have the apparatus to program another computer for the car to match it to the transponder on her key. So um, I got the express joy of uh, towing that thing 750 miles back home here locally. And uh, this is the trailer I used to do it. And here's a picture of uh, part of the trip. All right, well, there's a picture of my truck, and there's her car on the trailer, and you see the mountains in the background, and you people who know me know that I don't live around the mountains. Um, and there's, a, I guess, a closer-up picture, but um, guys, I saved a ton of money towing this thing home myself. I know a local mechanic around here. Um, there, there's some things that are just out of my league, and reprogramming a computer is one of them on an automobile. Uh, anyway, he uh, is a big time mechanic. He just recently retired. He said he doesn't even do that. So my sibling recommended Bennett Auto and uh, Sefner and that guy did a phenomenal job. And the first thing he asked was, was there any lightning around when the car quit running? You know? So I asked my wife and you know, I, I never even thought of that. But yeah, she said there had been a huge thunderstorm that night and then in the morning when she went out there to use her car, it wouldn't start. So the uh, mechanic also had a car um, that he had towed in from some young man out there in Valrico and it, um, it there had been a huge thunderstorm that night and his car quit running and the ECU went out in that. And you say, well, Homestead Prepper, that's just, that's just, uh, you know, uh, just a fluke. It just rarely happens. Well, I want you to know that the family member she, my wife was visiting up in North Carolina a year earlier, they had a huge thunderstorm, knocked over a tree, missed a car. But their car wouldn't start up either, and they had to end up totaling it because they couldn't get a computer for it. It was a German-made car, and they just, they, for whatever reason, they couldn't get it, and they ended up buying another one. So, guys, I think uh, the threat of naturally induced EMP is real, now, obviously, and you can find videos on YouTube or wherever of cars being hit by lightning and being disabled. Um, the threat of a man-made EMP, I think, is a whole lot less unlikely. That's that's just my opinion. Uh, but, you know, anything could happen. And this is uh, why this is part one. And, guys, what I'm going to be making is a homemade surge protector for lightning or EMP. Now, you, I'm not affiliated with the EMP Shield or the uh, EMP Doctor guys. You know, they, they, uh, they have some stuff. I guess it's been tested or whatever. You know, it's just the cost of it, you know. But for what it cost to get four of those uh, suppressors mounted on four different vehicles would be what it cost to have the car repaired, which I think was $1,600 is what they charged me, the mechanic did, for a new computer and having it reprogrammed. But uh, this right here is uh, cost a lot less than that. Now, guys, th this is why this is a part one. There's a, a bunch of components that I just can't get right now, or they want you to buy, uh, you know, they got a component there for, you know, $1.79, but you got to buy, you know, a minimum of a thousand of them. You know, you can do the math on that. You know, I just don't need a thousand of them. But these are uh, gas neon discharge tubes. There's a capacitor in there. There's metal oxide varistors, and those black things are TVS diodes, and that is the secret of, um, of EMP suppression is... Uh, transient voltage suppressor diodes and that's what those are I just need some a uh, couple more that I've got on order but uh, like I said some things I just can't get right now or they're 60 weeks out and you know, I'm kind of wanting them now and I'll leave a link there's a guy on YouTube who has um, I guess he has a better one than this 
he seems to know more about it than I do. But I'll leave a link to his, uh, his video series, uh, David Nooner is his name. But I just wanted to bring up the threat of EMP is real. And I also wanted to throw out there that all these internet experts, all these YouTube experts that say, oh, modern cars are protected from EMP, that they will not be disabled if we have an EMP event. Well, them, them people are all full of crap. Okay, guys? So I just thought I'd put that out there. So I'm going to do something about it. Now, guys, uh, like I said, it would cost me a pretty penny to EMP proof all my vehicles or surge protect them. But this right here didn't really cost a whole lot. You know, I, I still need to do some more solder work. I ran out of solder on the thing. But this is, uh, this is my version. And uh, part two, when those other parts come in, I'll put the rest of that together and uh, we'll install it on uh, my test vehicle. Okay, Homestead Prepper out.